Welcome back to the Community Review on Hot 92.3. I'm Josefa Salinas, your host. Profiles in Life and Success, the series we are currently running. What an amazing profile I have for you today. How about someone who is a multicultural visual artist, award-winning author, illustrator of over 17 children's book, authored an autobiographical art marketing book, three poetry books, a book of affirmations, and a cookbook. Talk about somebody who is almost done it all, a popular keynote speaker, architectural designer who's won awards, my goodness, an honorary doctorate degree, Hall of Fame inductee award, Women Who Dared award, just the list goes on and on, nominated for the NAACP Image Award. The book is called Living My Dream, an Artistic Approach to Marketing. Who are we talking about? You're like, please, 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 who could this be? (laughs) Cynthia St. James, good morning. Good morning. It is so wonderful to have you here. <laughs> when I hear that bio, it makes me kind of tired. Like, did I do that? Right. I mean, yeah. I should really be exhausted like, right Whoo. now. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, it the book is so amazing, an artistic approach to marketing. So I would imagine that having all of these different skills, you got to know something about marketing because it, they're not all in the same field. No, they're not. And unfortunately, most of us visual artists don't use the left side of the brain very often and kind of we, we shy away from it. So that's one of the things that I'm trying to help with that book as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Living My Dream, um, an artistic approach to marketing. How do you get the artistic people who use the right side of the brain to really get a handle on what's available to them as far as marketing their own things? What I primarily did in this book is I wrote about all of my mistakes and things I learned. And at the end of each chapter, it's a really easy read. At the end of each chapter, there's marketing tips. Everything from as simple as the importance of making appointments to as deep as copyright. And so every single chapter is a snip out of my life. From uh, I sold my first painting when I was 20 in New York. And at the time, I was an accounts receivable clerk. Wow. So I was already, you know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there I was doing that. And mm-hmm. my first commission was a lawyer at that company. So it kind of just tells that whole story uh, up until actually October of last year. And then it, I just released it in November. It's the first book I ever self-published. All my other books are major publishers. And that's why it's even more incredible that it's up for an image award. So let's talk about that decision right there. Your other books were done with publishers Uh and you decided to self-publish. That is a big task. I know because I self-published. What made you decide to self-publish? What made me decide is that initially over six years ago, I was asked to write a book on my marketing tips. And I wrote the book and it sit, sat on a shelf for about a little over a year and a half because I decided I didn't want to go with that publisher. And then I started teaching workshops on the business of art. And duh, I took my book down and caught up the last six and a half years oh. and added more tips and more things, you know, updated it to the tech stuff now. Very not, nice. not those big uh, marketing kits we used to, have to send uh-huh. through the mail. You know, making it more up to date today. Right. Because now it's a click of a button and you can have audio, video, television, newspapers, everything all in an electronic media kit. Exactly. Save on a lot of uh, cost of paper and Mm -hmm. and, and postage and all kinds of things. And you can update so much quicker. When you had to print out before, once it was printed, you're like, oh gosh, I have 5,000 copies. How do I go back in and add this new thing? And with electronic media kits... You're like, okay, I was on Channel 7 yesterday. Let me insert that into my media kit and boom, resend it out. And you don't throw all those papers and tear sheets out because you're outdated. Exactly. Right. Right. So let's talk a little bit about you. You sold your first painting when you were? 20. 20. Yeah, uh, 1969. And what made you decide to pick up that brush for the first time? Whoa, I can imagine some of those paintings. I feel like some of the paint probably just fell off whatever I painted them on because I would go straight into the store and buy things and experiment. So the first thing that I was doing in New York, uh, I was painting for my apartment, my first apartment. So I was hanging my paintings, painting my paintings, abstracts and landscapes of places I'd like to go, like Europe, primarily Paris. And then uh, co-workers saw me at, on payday, art supplies taking them home. So they got a little kind of inquisitive and, and one lawyer enough to say, "Would you? can I commission you to do a painting for me? And back then it was a little, mentally a little easier because abstracts were in vogue. So you couldn't really mess up an abstract. Right, because right. it's kind of what it is. It's what it is. And it's an expression. It's an expression. <laughs> yeah. And then from that, I, I started getting a, st- a stream of commissions from co-workers, other offices. And that's how I started. That's how I became a professional artist. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about poetry. Where does the inspiration for poetry come? Poetry popped up a year after my first a painting cell. I know that in um, junior high, I had a music column. Okay. And in high school, I was d- journalism. In fact, I had to cover my own running for homecoming queen thing. So I was doing myself in a third person. <laughs> Covering since, yourself, huh? <laughs> Third person writer right? since then. You know. Okay. Uh, but I have to, the journey, Josef, is, um, it's very, was very helpful for me because I had the accounting. But then when I moved to L.A., I was in the record business for years. So I learned to promote artists, publicity and promotion. And, and then, of course, later I was able to apply that to myself. And then sometime later, I worked at Paramount for a while. And then I also worked at Disney. And I worked a freelance for CBS and Epic. Um, just amazing things. But I was, as I was learning this, I was saving it for what I could also do with it. And that's what a lot of the book comes from, from learning those different. Right. And then I was even in advertising. I worked in advertising office for magazine, Scientific American and Southern Living two different magazines. So I learned about placing of ads. and Which is invaluable when you're talking about <laughs> when you have things of your own right. to present. Right. So sometimes I think maybe the, the life lesson here, especially for um, people out there listening, we might not, what you want to do might not be what you're doing, but there might be something that in what you're doing that you can take. Exactly. To put to your passion. Exactly. Later. And it's, and it's so true, and it's so being open to that passion. And I appreciate every single job I had. I even had, a, in the 70s for a while, I did a little acting. That didn't hurt either because when you have to talk to people. Right. You know, um, most most artists, not all, we're, we're shy. In the beginning, I've, I've stand in front of an audience unveiling a piece, painting for lawyers years ago. And after we unveiled the piece, and there were like 500 people looking at me, the attorney looks at me and says, Gee, would you like to say anything? Guess what I did? What? I pretended I had laryngitis. <laughs> and it just came off the top of my head. Right. I, had, I didn't plan it, but it was like, no, too many eyes looking at me. Mm-hmm. And now I enjoy speaking in front of audiences, or children to adults. It doesn't, uh-huh. mean, yeah, it's more of a, a joy now. So to be so talented in so many different areas, do you ever s- feel overwhelmed? Well, I've never got to dance professionally, Uh-oh. and I can't see. Yeah, the, the, the year's not over. <laughs> <laughs> but I love, I love all uh, sides of uh, expression. Mm-hmm. I actually dance a lot by myself. I just put on my music and dance. I might have a, an exhibit, and I'll make everybody dance at the end of the exhibit. Or, you know, I still uh-huh. get it in my own uh-huh. kind of way. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. So looking at your work, so incredibly expressive, and your books talk about the artistic approach to marketing, which would be, I mean, if you are out there, no, I don't care if you're doing art, Mm -hmm. I don't care what you're doing, your book is such an easy read for understanding marketing. Yes. And now that people know a little bit more about you, they see the variety of jobs that you've had. Mm -hmm. There's no better person to get marketing from than somebody who's had the ability to work in so many different areas that all combine all of that. Then you've got your natural talent, the things that you have, and to put it all together in a book to present, to show someone else the way. That that's truly my intention and that's why the the marketing tips are recapped at the end. And then I even put some affirmations because I also wrote a book called The I Wills According to St. James. Ah, so the I Wills. <laughs> uh-huh. instead, instead of thou shall not right. the I Wills. So positive affirmations. So I included at the end of the book thirty one of those. Give me your two favorite. Oh God. Oh here's one that I got, got directly from the Aborigine book that inspired it. I will indulge in music. Mm. Okay. 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 I will paint the day the way I'd like it to be. Oh, that's a great yeah. one. Yeah. That is a great one. Because so many people feel that that their life is out of control, that they don't actually have a say in what's going to happen, what that day is going to be like. When someone does something to you, you decide how you're going to react. Mm-hmm. You know, well, so-and-so made me cry. No, they did something to you. You chose how you wanted to react. Mm-hmm. And that's really powerful once it, you realize it's, that. It's extremely powerful uh, because um, at different times in my life, I've realized it more. 
sometimes I didn't realize it. And then even starting the days do I do with affirmations at dawn. You know, I go walk the beach for dawn so I can see that sunrise. Oh, and just, the sunrise. And just amazing. feel that power. And then mm -hmm. uh, last week, the, the full moon's still there and the sun rising back here. Things like that um, I decided to gift myself with. And that was a choice. That was a definite choice because I don't live by the beach. Mm -hmm. I drive to the beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you are also the designer of the first United States postal stamp for the Kwanzaa holiday. Yeah. How did that come your way? Well, this is how I felt. I got a phone call of a designer for the uh, out of D.C. got in touch with me. And the first thing is a part New Yorker. I said, how did they get my phone number? Right. <laughs> my first thought. Uh -huh. But it was actually from a book cover that I had created for another author for Kwanzaa. They had no idea that I had also already written a book on Kwanzaa, but that's what they found on the Internet. And so they got to the publisher, and they, that's how they got my number. And they called, and they asked me if I'd be interested to do that. And I, I said, of course. And uh, the PR person to me, no matter what, still came out. I sent the media kit, even though I already had the job. Mm -hmm. And she was just so sweet. She got back to me and asked me if I had time to do it. <laughs> yes, I said, no. You know, but I, the right. follow-up, I think, is important. Even mm -hmm. when you already have the job, people right. should know right. the other things you've done. Uh huh. And the most unusual thing about that week was a few days later, the Girl Scouts USA called me and asked me to do their 85th anniversary poster. So I call that my All-American Girl Week. There you yeah. go. <laughs> wow. Now, your paintings grace the cover of over 70 books. Yes including Pulitzer Prize-winning author Alice Walker, New York Times best-selling author Iyanla. Oh, I've had Iyanla on my show before. Yeah, yeah. And Terry McMillan, Barnes & Noble, licensed your artwork for Brilliance. Mm -hmm. Just so many things. Architectural designs. Oh, I now, know. let's talk about that. You've that, got all this beautiful art stuff, and now you're talking about buildings? Well, you know, it sounds so impressive, and yet it is when I say architectural design, my biggest architectural design is for Ontario International Airport baggage claim. Two feet by eight inches high by 150 feet long. Wow. And uh, that's when I learned about fabricators. Because at first it was said, no way in the world could I do that. And Ricardo Duffy, who's a, a muralist but ceramic tile and, and artist, had the twin terminal. So he fabricated it for me. So I learned by doing to be able to design stained glass, design ceramic tile, and then in Sacramento, I even have uh, elevator doors in the lobby of one of the government buildings that I, the art is actually etched into the metal. So it's more like bright color lines rather than the full color. But that just came from overcoming fear and saying yes to challenges and saying, well, I'm going to go for it. And uh, so I've been able to do that so far. When you were a young girl, did you ever imagine that years down the road that you would be leaving pieces of yourself that will be here for years and years way beyond any of our lifetimes? Absolutely no idea. Uh, as I got a little older, around 1920, I had hoped in my life that I would at least be able to take care of myself as an artist. But I didn't realize that it would become that international. It still amazes me and humbles me to think of how many people wake up to my art every day. Some of them don't even realize it might be just a book they have. But a lot of people actually live with my art, and that, that amazes me. You are such an amazing woman. It's such a <laughs> pleasure to profile you. Oh, thank you. And to let uh, the audience hear a little bit about who you are and how amazing you are. And I think the most amazing thing is with all of this talent, with all of these awards and accolades and just all this amazement about you, you are just such a down-to-earth, <laughs> just natural person. Could never change. And that... I, I just had my 63rd birthday, so I think it's a little too late for change. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say when you hit 60, that's when you're supposed to really start living and doing whatever right, you want. Right, right, right. So what haven't you done that you want to do? Whoa, let me see. I want to continue to, to uh, do architectural design type work. There's a possibility that... Um, in the next year, within this year, that I'll have a chance to actually design architectural design for the outside of the building, but it'll be ceramic tile. See, most all my work is inside. There's a mural uh, that's being painted now in a, a building that's so important. It's a new building. It's called Works USA, but it's a building for young people, 18 to 24, getting a fresh start. And it's um, 30 feet, 32 feet high by eight and a half. But it's, it's something to encourage them every day when they come out, you know, so that's being painted now. So it's endless. I'm just so open to, I've already started another book. Wow. Uh, Any... Entirely different from okay. more of a novel. Okay, can we get a little hint? A little novel. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm not sure if it's going to be a novella. Uh -huh. You know, first I, was, I thought a short story, but no, I'm kind of into it. So novella at least, maybe a novel. Very nice. <laughs> well, we will have to have you back to have your to talk about oh, your book. And you know what? I What's think that? I hope I have it with me. And there's a little book in here for you. Poetry. Oh. So can I touch you a collection of love poetry? Yeah, and that's just poetry, you know, like absolutely timeless because there's never a time when poetry doesn't fit in your life, no matter what time of the year it is, right? Some of it's from really a long time ago, seventies, early eighties. But just kind of fun. So what I did, Josef, is I in two months, November and December, I self-published three books, two little ones and then that book. Very nice. Yeah. And, oh, and we talked about that. I have to say it's easier now because you can go online and do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know if you want me to tell you the name of the company. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, it's, yeah. it's called Create Space. Okay. You can do it with uh, film. You can do it with music and, or you can do it with your writing. And it's a, it's a company owned by Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. So your book immediately will go on to Amazon.com and to Kindle for an ebook if you elected to do it. Wow. Yeah. So I found that quite by uh, coincidence. And I found it, and I've encouraged everyone to try that way. CreateSpace.com. CreateSpace.com. Wow. Yeah. Well, I just I want to read a, a little excerpt here from your um Collection of love poetry. Along came you, you reawakened my spirit. When you rekindled my fire, along came you. <laughs> Wonderful. And then I tell you what, anybody who's reached puberty knows exactly what that's about. Oh, yes. Oh, when yes. When you run across somebody, especially, I will go so far as to say, especially when you're a little bit older. Mm -hmm. When you think, oh, gosh, I'm probably not ever going to find anybody again. And then you stumble across this person that lights that fire that you thought was long right, gone. Right, right. And there it is. And there's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful words in this book to help you remember or to look forward to, to what look, love is. Definitely look forward. Always look forward. <laughs> definitely. Well, it has been such a pleasure talking with you today. Promise you'll come back? I more than promise because I really love your show. It's always been an inspirational, powerful show when I've had a chance to listen to it. Well, Coming home from my walk on the beach. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Good place for it. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I would like to invite you to come to our summer program that we do for girls called How to Be a Girl. I would love to have you come and speak to my girls. And I'm going to tell you, I would love to do that because I, I looked it up on your website before uh -huh. I came early to, today and I said, I need to talk to her about that. That sounds like something I would like to do. Good. Well, yeah, we would got love, me. love to have you there. Uh -huh. Congratulations on everything you've done. <laughs> I know there's so much more coming your way. And thank you for being such an amazing profile in life and success. Thank you, Josefa, so much. What an amazing profile of life and success. Cynthia St. James. Make sure you hit my page at hot923.com, keyword Josefa, for links to everybody that we had on today. And don't forget to check out the Job Corner. I just put up a whole bunch of new job listings. I'm Josefa Salinas. Until we get together again, stay strong, stay focused, most of all, stay informed. I'll see you next Sunday on the Community Review, Hot 92.3. Have a fabulous day. Enjoy your family. Grab a friend. Go for a walk. Try to catch a sunset if you get a chance.